what is going on everybody it's your boy marshall live and i am live you guys we've got a very special edition of the marshall gillen show today because it's not going to be just me going on all by myself as a matter of fact i am bringing on a special guest right now here in one second and if you guys don't know who Stephanie Bosco is, and you don't know who the superfood goddess is, then you're missing out. And today, right now, in this moment, you've got to drop what you're doing. I don't care what it is. And stay tuned because I am going to be sharing a story with you about triumph, about overcoming, about battling adversity, and how you guys can do it. One of the things that connected me and Stephanie together as such good friends right from the get-go is she is a straight-up mental health warrior. She's a holistic nutritionist, and she's just a life coach, and she has these amazing things going on, but the connection that we've really made is through this, this advocacy of mental health awareness. So if you've ever battled with mental health issues, if you currently battle with mental health issues, if you are somebody like Stephanie or I who are overcoming and battling through them, and you just want to know how you can make a big impact in the world, in the mental health uh, advocacy space, then you're gonna wanna tune into this. So without further ado, let's bring Stephanie on. Algae Works. Hey, what's going on, Lauren? Thanks for hopping on. Let's see how it goes. And uh, if you guys aren't subscribed to the podcast yet, make sure you guys do so. Hey, what's up, girl? Hi, how are you? I am so good. Thank you so much for joining me today. I um, I don't have any internet really. I have internet in my cabin, but it's so bad. It's, it's so bad, so I can't go live. So I was like, I'm making a special trip into town. I'm parked at the post office. I'm like, let's get this ish going. <laughs> I love it. And, and just like any, any great entrepreneur, if something doesn't work out, you figure out another way to get it going. hundred well, percent. And you're just like, for those viewers who don't know who Stephanie is, um, guys, you guys can go follow her on all or on social media, Instagram at the superfood goddess. But, um, yeah, you were just messaging me right before this. And she's like, thank you for being patient with me. I was like, I wanted to let you know. I was like, girl, I'm just hanging out. Like, I got nothing going on right now. So um, it's totally cool. But really, I'm just going to come out of the gate swinging. I'll introduce who you are in a second. And we'll go through the, the, all the things. But I, I, brought, I brought you on specifically because of the mental health aspect. You know, I, 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 there's something that you're doing amazing, uh, which is you're hosting a three-day virtual event, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But the thing that was so like stuck out to me so much is I was like, have you done one of these before? And you're like, no, no, I'm, I'm just going for it. And I was like, oh, like, who is this person? And it's how far you've come in the last like three years. And not that you are any far behind, but just the battle that you've overcome and what you've worked through. So right out the gate, I just want to ask you if you'll share with the audience, you know, what, what, why is mental health advocacy so important to you? Why does it hit home so much? And how have, how, where are some, maybe some battles that you've gone through in the past or even currently as you build your business? Wow. Great. All of it. Great. Thank you for asking. <laughs> yeah, of course. Mental health is near and dear to me uh, for many reasons. Uh, it started because my brother was diagnosed with schizophrenia and bipolar mm. disorder. And, you know, just as disease comes up, as different things take place in life, emergency traumas, you have to figure out what, what are the next steps, right? right? I mean, you, you could go down in this downward spiral and people do that all the time. And I've caught myself get, getting in yeah. that place at times, but then I have to consciously remember, okay, how do, how do we pivot this? How, how do we become resilient in this moment and, and move forward? Uh, so we figured out, you know, how we could support him better. And it was by changing our diets or that, that was our first, that was like our first defense was let's try to change our diets. We heard that right. mental health could have something to do with that. And we did a three month plant-based challenge, changed our diets. We stopped drinking for three months. And what I noticed, cause I actually was diagnosed with depression and anxiety myself. I noticed during that three months, how much better I felt. Right. So, you know, I saw that connection, not only for my brother and my mom who did it, but I saw it for myself personally, just energetically. I was more energetic. I was sleeping better. My skin started to change. I, I wasn't getting little acne flare-ups right. here and there. So that already just changed a lot. And then as I went on to just through my journey, um, once you change what's on your plate, once you become conscious of what's in your life, you start, you start going to more conscious events. You start right. talking to more conscious people. And that's where I started learning, 
entrepreneurship, you know, wanting to start my own. I've always wanted to start my own business. Right. Uh, my mom was always, she's, she's an immigrant. She's from, uh, from Germany. And so I she, didn't know that. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. I'm actually a German citizen. I have my German passport. No way. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. It just, it doesn't come up in conversation very yeah, often. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so, you know, she, she was a single mom immigrant and she was like, you have got to fight in this world. You have wow. to be strong. You have to be successful. I wow. want you to be able to support yourself. I don't want you to have to rely on anyone. And so that was, that's been ingrained in me. And so ever since then, it's just been like moving forward. Um, and so, yeah, how, how do I move forward? How do I start my own business? How do I create confidence in myself? Because I will tell you, I was such an insecure human growing up. I was emo and I just thought the worst of myself. And okay, imposter syndrome absolutely still takes place in my life. Sure. I still have that chatter that's like, oh, you can't do this or you don't know enough. And I just have to flick it off. I always tell people, <laughs> flick that voice off. Get out of here. Like, well, brush it off. No, no right. say here. <laughs> I love it. Well, I, I, it's interesting because I, I think, well, I, we met, I think almost three years ago, I, just recently, or maybe it was, maybe, no, that can't be true. Nope. I think it was only like a year ago, actually. Is that what was came it? up? 2019, maybe. I can't remember. There was an event in San Diego, um, yes. but it hasn't been, it hasn't been that long. And so uh, it was an event that I was speaking at. I was actually really sick that day. It was like, I was, I was, I was running a temperature of like 102 or something, which is kind of funny. And like, not to, you know, it's just kind of funny. Like back then I was like running a temperature of 102 and nobody was like, go home. Like people are like, Oh, like you'll probably be okay. Now, if I was like running a temperature, people would be like, dude, get the away from me. But um, <laughs> it's so, it's so because the, at the basis of mental health, and I'm glad that you said that you're like, I still battle with imposter syndrome. I still deal with bouts of depression or anxiety or overwhelm or doubt. And that's the thing that I think is so important. And I love that you brought that up. And I want to expand on this first because a lot of the videos out there we go. I had a call coming in. Um, some of the videos I make, you know, is me just vulnerably and raw, just crying, you know? And I try to share those videos with people because and inevitably, 90% of people that comment back are, they don't even read the caption, I feel like. They're like, oh my God, it's gonna be okay. Like, and which is, like, which is great. But the reason I share those kinds of videos and I always caption them, I'm like, look, we live in a world where we get to experience a full spectrum of emotion. And all these emotions are like the colors of the rainbow. And you can't just look at red or green and be like, oh, that's, that's terrible. Like, without colors, you lose the experience that you have the, that, that full spectrum and the same thing with emotions. And so I try to share with my audience as often as possible. I'm like, look, like emotions are not good or bad. No, no emotion or feeling has meaning, but which we give it. And so the biggest change in my, well, one of the big keys to my mental health has been able to fall in love with that contrast or finding peace or join the contrast, you know? Mm. And so I try to share these videos, like, listen, just because like for, for example, like I, I dealt with depression, anxiety, like we have, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers have, and um, I, I still deal with that, but it doesn't mean that like I'm unhappy. It doesn't mean my life is all over the place. It's, it's me accepting and sitting in peace. And, I, and so as it relates to that, do, do you relate to what I, that too? And if so, what was it or how did you get there? Was there a big moment? I'm sure it was more over time, but how, how has that changed changed your life? How did you arrive at that for some of the women and men that might be listening? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I too, I love that you share. It's so vital. Mm. And we live in a world, I mean, now we're having to connect more because everyone's more online now, but right. there's, there, you know, disconnection happens. And, and there's a lot of people that aren't talking about real life things. And there's a lot of people on social media that are putting their best foot forward all the time, which is awesome. We do right. want to see your best foot, but it is nice to also understand that people are human and that there is something, you know, going on underneath. And I think that was my biggest pivotal moment. When I was 19, I got a mentor. I didn't mean to. I didn't know what a mentor was. I didn't know I needed one so badly. I did. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he he started uh, uh, teaching me and taking me to different seminars and it and I and then I started learning that there are other people on earth that go through depression and anxiety as well. I started meeting other women that were on depression medication that had been through childhood wow. trauma that had been through all these things and I thought, oh my gosh, 
I'm not alone. For the longest time, right. I pinpointed myself mm. and I thought I was the only person on earth. I know it sounds narcissistic, but I thought right. I was the only person on earth that was going through all these terrible feelings. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's narcissistic at all because I, I know that that's the thing, right? Like that's what so many people battle with. And so it's like, even as I train my speakers or just come in contact with friends or places I go, it's like, that's the biggest thing I'm always saying. I'm like, people go, well, I'm nervous to get on stage. I'm like, well, if you're up there and you're, if you are up there and you're nervous, just tell the people you're nervous. Like, just be like, hey, guess what, guys? Um, I volunteered to do this. You know what? I'm freaking out. I don't know if anybody, if you guys have ever freaked out before, but uh, if we can do this. <laughs> and so it's like, but you know what I mean? It's like, we all think we're alone. And so for you to be able to share the way you've shared in some of the videos you share and how I know that you coach your clients and how you show up on stage, it's like, I know that you get that too. And it's so important for people because that's exactly what society has done. Like that's exactly what culture has done is they, they make us judge ourselves because if we think that we're experienced alone, well, we must be narcissistic. Like, no, why can't you just be self-aware? And of that self-awareness, it starts to go, okay, well, are there other people like me? And we haven't been taught um, really in Western society at all in most of the world to share those stories vulnerably because we don't want to be judged or look bad, which listen, I get, like, I get it. But I think that that's one of the things that you're saying is that, you know, when you open up and you start to realize that when you surround yourself with other better people or the, the things that you feed your mind or you feed your heart or you feed your soul, that's what's going to start to at, le at least create relatability. So you know, you're not sinking in this ocean all alone. Is that kind of what you're saying, right? Absolutely. I mean, the um, music I listened to changed. The seminars I started going to changed. I mean, my email box fills up with yoga, meditation, right. mindful living, uh, mindful eating, healthy it's, living. I, I love that. So let me, let me ask you this, because that makes me think then, and this is going to be probably so vital for a lot of people watching. And, and you guys who are watching, you guys are listening to this or watching this, maybe grab a pen and paper, because as we start to expand, there's some things you're going to want to write down that I want you guys to forget. And this might be one of them. And so I want you to maybe share some tips with us, because well, maybe not some tips, but as we start to move into this like uh, technological world even more, and it seems to be accelerating, we, you know, we talk about kind of these mental health issues that we've dealt with. We talk about the fact that, okay, well, if we can step up and realize that we're at least not alone, then the next ultimate hurdle really becomes almost like social media because it's become such a part of our life. And so even though people know they want change and they're ready to fix their mental health and they believe they can do it, and they're not alone, we're still logging in every day mindlessly. And so there's something you keep saying about everything because there's something I still want to get into too, which is Stephanie is completely vegan and I've gone carnivore for pretty much the last three months, but I, I want to talk about that too. But um, uh, the, the, to be able to log in and be intentional with what you fill your mind with, and intention, you keep saying conscious eating. I was consciously doing this, consciously doing that. So in a world where we're just mindlessly logging in and scrolling feeds, can you maybe talk a little bit in your experience as a coach and a transformationist, like how we just naturally absorb these things into our mind, our body, and our spirit that we see, even if we're not consciously absorbing it, can you maybe talk to the energetic level or maybe how people can start to understand how literally what we feed our, our eyeballs and our heart and our ears, um, how does that affect mental health? Absolutely. I, yeah, I mean, we are consuming. There is, there is content coming at us all the time. And it really is our job. It's my job personally to fill my life with what I want to attract mm. and what I want to have in it. And so, I mean, even just for example, scrolling on my feed, you know, there's a lot of, I speak to a lot of clients and a lot of friends who are just besides themselves about what's going on in the world. And right. I know that what's going on is serious it's hard it's horrific there's all these really t th terrible things you could be saying about it but what i will say is when i open up my feed honestly like i have a lot of truthful like truth seekers and and like amazing people on my feed but it's a lot of it is positivity and it's even talking about yeah. what's currently going on what's hard in the world but how we can shift it's all about shifting and so i personally am not even at this point in my life i'm not consuming a lot of that negativity anymore because I've, I've not allowed it into my life so yeah. it really is it's cutting the ties with that and and so again going back to conscious i'm consciously 
looking at which accounts, you know, I'll, I'll check out an account and I'll say, okay, how is their vibe like mine? Are they, was it just one post that got me or was it a couple where I'm going to then feel uplifted? Right. I always want to feel uplifted in a world where there's so much that'll Come pull on, you down. I go. need to feel uplifted. Let's go. And I love that because <laughs> we all know the famous quote where uh, focus goes, energy flows. And I think it's absolutely true because, you know, I was in such a dark place the last two years of my life and finally getting a chance to heal, which like, that's what was really going on, you know? But I was just so lost. I was so lost within this matrix of uh, this disconnection. I'm sure a lot of people who relate, who follow you or follow me or are part of our community rather. I feel like a lot of us can relate to the fact that it's like, I felt like I wanna make a difference and I know that money is important. I know that we need it to be able to function within the matrix and, and it can help a lot of people in the short term. But like overall, it's just, it's so, I can feel it in every aspect of my body, how foreign it is to like the human experience. And I understand that the part of the mind virus is that whole thing, but as a means to an end, you know, it's like, okay, to create money. So I, there's a lot of us people I know that are watching this and we're like, okay, like I know I need to be in business, but there's just something Marshall that's like crazy about it. And so I felt that disconnection starting in 2019, shortly after we had met at the last, one of the last events I spoke at. And, and in the beginning of 2020, I, I, I couldn't help it. I just was like, I wanted to wake everybody up. I didn't care what, what you believed in. I just was like, okay, can you guys not see what's going on? And literally what it did is- like, I loved it. I tried and it evaporated my network though, like 99% <laughs> of it in like a month. And um, it really started, I started to judge myself because I started, I think a lot of us can probably relate to this too, is that, you know, the likes went down, the follows went down, the views went down. And all of a sudden my thinking, thinking an old pro subconscious programming taught me, which is what a lot of us think is that our self-worth is based on our performance or our results. And so now all of a sudden everything in my life's falling apart and I'm looking at social media, I'm trying to share my truth from my heart. And I'm starting to understand that like, or everything's going away. And so I'm going, I'm worthless. This is never going to work. What am I going to do? And so I love that you're sharing this with the audience because it's true. It's like, I decided a couple months ago, I was like, this, no, it doesn't matter if I'm right. Like nobody care. Nobody cares if I'm right. Even if Stephanie looks at my stuff and she thinks I'm right, she'll be like, mm, yeah, Marshall's right. She might give me a tap, but like, okay, but then what else? And so I, and that was a massive shift for me. And it was um, this very, me moving to Montana has been this very, this energy that I've never met felt before. And it's this very like um, familiar, like I've done, like I've been here before. Like I like inter energetically belong here and I'll get into like nutrition here in a second. But as it pertains to wrap up over what we're talking about here is that when I started to kind of really tune into how my body was feeling, these, mm. these, these gut feelings, these intuitions, I didn't know mm. anything about, but I started to focus my energy and be more intentional with everything I was doing. And when I decided that nobody cares if I'm right, I started to let go of the identity that I thought I needed to be on social media. And when I started to feed my feed again with the things that, I, that just made me feel good, because if it's always right now, then how can I focus on just being at peace and in harmony right now? Even if I'm in fear, like, oh, cool. This is part of the human experience. Look at me living, like, cool. And so I think that's such a great message for you to be intentional. You, you're talking about this intentional living, be intentional with social media. I know it made a massive change in my life when I focused my intention to start empowering people again through storytelling. But now let's take a, this, this step further because I know that you're the perfect person to answer this question because it's like, okay, cool. First, we, you know, we have to accept the fact that we may be battling some mental health issues. Then it's like uh, going out there and, and becoming aware of the fact that we're not alone. There's other people out there that are experiencing to us. And then coming to the fact of like, well, being intentional with our life and especially with social media because it dominates so much of my life. But the next step would be then to put that into practice. Okay, cool, Steph. Like, cool, put it into practice. But we struggle so often to show up to these things. And what I found is that when we set boundaries in other areas of our life, oftentimes it'll clean up the things that we seemingly don't have control over. And now this is where you become one of the top experts in my whole entire network. And it's when it comes to nutrition, because we are a cellular being. There's 50 to 70 trillion cells that make up our body. We're just a host. We're, this is a nation of citizens, of 50 trillion citizens, and we are the leader. And so when we intentionally feed our physical body, it transcends so much else. And so we'll, I want to break down. We can kind of go back and forth a little bit uh, about what we're feeding it. But can you just talk about first, just energetically, like 
the, the, the concept, the energy exchange of energy into our soul, how can that help us set boundaries in every area of our life? Absolutely. Because once again, you are making a choice of exactly what you're going to eat and what goes into your mouth. We have that choice. And it's not, you know, we don't grow up with this conscious choice. Like, you know, right. mom, dad doesn't tell us you have the conscious choice to eat whatever you want. Like, I don't remember my mom saying that <laughs> she just made me whatever. Right. And I right. just ate it. And then as I went on this journey and I realized that I, ener I energetically was feeling better, I wanted to eat more that way. And I started researching again, and I started wow. looking to see like what, what different juices do for you, what different, what different uh, uh, vegetables do for you. Vegetables, uh, I mean, depending on whatever your diet is, but, but really me personally, eating yeah. whole food is really the best way. I mean, yeah, you could go vegan, but you could also be unhealthy and, and an unenergetic vegan by eating a ton of processed vegan food. It's all about whole foods, eating yeah. the apple straight off the tree. Yeah. I, and I love that. And that's something I've preached for so long. It's, you know, single ingredient foods, whole foods, foods that rot. Like if you can leave, leave your food yeah. on a shelf and it doesn't rot in a couple of days, you guys, it, you probably shouldn't eat it. Uh, the things that make that food break down and rot like that are, are these enzymes. And when we eat food that's void of these enzymes, what happens is we're not breaking our food down and then we absorb less food in our stomach. And then the less we absorb, they say you are what you eat, but it's really, you're, you are what you absorb. And Absolutely. I know that you, you would say that too. And so let me like, again, um, how does somebody start to decide this stuff? Because it's like, you know, you have somebody out there like me that's doing carnivore. You have somebody like you who's vegan. You got people that are keto and paleo and they're this and they're that you know i think there's like breathitarians even out there that are trying to survive and just care yes. which it was going to take a weirder conversation but i might uh i might not think it's as crazy as i used to but uh <laughs> how, how can somebody decide you know they're watching they're watching this in all of your training and just just intuition and, and what you've kind of cultivated and practice yourself for people who are watching or listening to this, how can they even start to decide how to be a more conscious eater? How do you know what your body is intuitively asking for? You have to start getting really clear and focused about what's going on with you. You really have to tune in with yourself. And again, I think that a lot of us are walking this earth and we are detached from our bodies. And, and I don't mean that in any woo woo or like super spiritual way. I just think that we we, we consume with our eyes, with our mouth, and we don't, we don't really put two and two together. And so really, after you eat a meal, how do you feel? Do you feel tired? Do you feel excited? Do you feel sad? Like it's just, even just I, those right. little tiny things, being more intuitive with how you feel. For example, I realized that I had a gluten intolerance. Um, I'm not celiac, uh, but, there, but you can still be intolerant or, or uh, slightly sensitive. And I noticed that because I started about 20, 25 minutes after I would eat, which is about the, the digestion time or where you start to digest and you can start feeling full. I started realizing a depression in my mood. Like I just started feeling depressed and tired and like I wanted to take a nap. And my entire life, I thought it was normal to feel tired after you ate. I didn't think anything of it. No one told me anything. Right. And I was young. Uh, but so I noticed that and I thought, huh. And I was hearing about some gluten-free stuff and I thought, well, why don't I research? I'm all about research. You know, I, just because I tell you, you should go plant-based doesn't mean you should go plant-based. You should go look up. Because again, yeah, you could be eating vegan, but you could be an unhealthy vegan eating a bunch of processed yeah. foods. So it's really doing your research, setting yourself up for success. I think some people want to go 100% overnight and I, and I love the passion, but a lot of times what happens with that is you fail the next day or you think you failed the next day because you ate the wrong thing or you ate one wrong thing in your meal. And so then you're like, ah, screw exactly. this. I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> So, you know, like it's, it's really, yeah. being, I, it's I, being, I know. I, go ahead. Uh, well, no, no, I think it, I, it, like that's such, such, such sage advice because it's like, and the other thing I would add to that is experiment, like test out for yourself, go out and learn, ask some people and then test it out. I mean, uh, shortly after I met you, I went vegan for almost a whole entire year. Well, 100% plant-based because I did have honey. I would have honey every now and then because I was eating really more like a pranic diet, I guess, but yeah. Um, and I wanted to try it and I felt great and it, and it was awesome. But shortly after that, there was just this, uh, about a year, a year after that, I returned to like where I was actually from. And there was just something inside of me. It was like winter time. And it was just like, it was craving meat. 
Except I, the big thing for me is, is that I, it's, it's that I don't want to be part of the things that slaughter animals as part of the matrix as like Thank this you. mindlessly unconscious. Oh, well, I love animals and I support the dog pound, but I go buy burger from cows that were like not humanely raised. Right. And there's a lot more energetic stuff and energetic exchange I get into about, you know, emotion, how emotion is stored in the DNA of the cells. And like, we are what we eat, but yep. that aside, I, I just, you know, I would like a, to the audience. It's like, I went vegan for a year and then I went, I, I had meat. And I was about, I would say 80, 85% plant-based and I would only eat meat like once a week because it made me feel good. But something about moving here to Montana when I finally got out here in the mountains and settled in, it was like this intuitive knowing that I wanted, that, that I felt like I, like, I don't know, I, Stephanie, I can't even explain it. It's like this, this yearning to eat like I'm from the land. Like, so I started like the researching- the hunter-gatherers. Like, well, yeah, like, well, the Blackfoot Indian tribe is like, that's who's here in this glacier area. And so I started doing more research and it's like, it's like this, this yearning to return to the land and this very like, we all have to live together. Like there's nothing else, nothing else in this world seems to be singular except for human beings. You know, the, the tree grows and the, and the fruit drops on the ground and the little squirrel eats it and the bear eats it and the bear decomposes and it comes to ground. It's like this whole ecosystem. And I don't know what it is about it, but that being said, I wouldn't have found, I'm, I've been carnivore now for three months um, I didn't think I would ever survive without vegetables. And I don't feel one way or other about it. But the meat that I eat now is it's wild game or it's harvested in a very, I mean, like in an ethical way here where it's not like this mass production. It's like people going out and providing for the land and giving to the people, which to me is this very, this loving symbolic exchange. And so point being is that when it comes to dieting, I think that's in such a thing that you, that, I mean, you nailed it perfect is that really ask the questions, do the research, figure out intuitively what's calling to your soul. Because I don't think one thing's right or wrong. I, I've been on this weird kick lately, Steph, where I, where I think that I believe that we're living in a simulation and we don't have to get into that either, but we're living in a simulation now. I'm like, so I keep thinking like the movie, the new movie, Jumanji, you know, and all the characters drop in and I'm like, you know, they push their badge and their attributes come up, you know, Kevin Hart pushes hands and it's like weakness cake. I'm like, damn, that would suck. But um, point being is I start to feel like all of our avatars, our characters, they have these traits. So one of our viewers said, you should be eating you specific. And so without taking up too much more of your time today, because I, I, I know you got things you got going on, but that's the next step I want to take is because there's a lot of things that people are have questions about. And there's a lot of things that people want to try because it's not just nutrition. It's like, we think of our body, it's mental, physical, emotional, spiritual. And so health is really this, this, this four part or, you know, multi-part series. It's like, I always tell people, you know, you try to build a house and you're only building it with physical health. Well, it's like trying to build a house with one wall. Like you need all mm. four walls for your shit to stand up. Right. Yes. And so that's something that you specialize in. And so I yes. want to know specifically how has, how has embodying all areas of health, mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual, how has that changed your life? How has that impacted your business? And for about how long have you been doing all this? You know, like how long would you say you were unconscious before all of this? Mm, all great, great things to ask. And, and also, I really quickly, just to touch on what you had just said before. Please, too, yeah, before this, absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm actually in a nutrigenomics class right now, which is like, whoa, it's all about genetics. And there, it, there is a such thing as being able to turn on and off genes. Our cells are 100% fueled by the antioxidants and the nutrients and the minerals that we feed it. And there, there is literally, there, like you can actually get genetic testing and it will tell you if you are a hunter and gatherer, if you, you know, hunter or gatherer, if you, if you're really? more uh, prone to worry or not, like there's so many things that you That's can tell. That's dope. By, yeah, I mean, it is, I, I'm, I'm not an expert in it, but I'm just learning and it is like mind Have you done it? I haven't done, I'm actually going to order my test this week because I is want to Is it like 23 me or something? Is it like 23andMe? 23 23andMe is, they're one of the more popular ones I'm researching right now because okay. the, there's there's two things. There's, oh, I got to do this. I'm trying to figure out, um, so, because some of the, the genetic testing is done by companies that only give it to providers. Um, and then some of them give it to, you know, to customers like us. And I just want to check the validity of how valid it is right. going through 
uh, you know, going personally or going through a provider. I know yeah. it's more expensive. I just don't know which one's better. But yes, 23andMe is one of one of the biggest ones. I, I love that you've mentioned that because let's expand. I'll be, I, I want to re-ask you those three questions and I'll bring them yeah. back up. So don't worry about remembering. But okay. um, I want to expand on that because see, as for me, like I, I believe that me going vegan was like, well, you know, uh, maybe the audience is listening right now, just a short, like tiny recap. In 2019, I thought I was dying. I went on a mushroom trip while I was in Thailand. Uh, I didn't, I didn't know it was going to happen. I'd never done psychedelics before. If you had told me the day before that I was going to do them, I would have told you absolutely not. I won't come back the same. And I fucking didn't, <laughs> not even a little bit. And, but in um, the best way. Oh, in the best way. And so what I'm realizing for me that unlocked me is because I want to talk touch on epigenetics real quick. And yeah. we'll explain what that means in a second. But I would have never known about any of this if I hadn't had that mushroom trip, which was my initial connection that plants can be medicine. And it blew my world that like I'm living in a lie. And then the next thing was I thought that I was dying of you know stomach cancer. And like a man, I wasn't going to go to the doctor. And so I started researching online and, it, and it, there was just copious amounts of real life stories of people who have healed insane diseases, stage four cancers, pancreatic cancers, um, you know, diabetes. Uh, and again, this is just, you can take for what you heart want disease. as a listener and a viewer. Yeah, heart disease, Alzheimer's. Um, I mean, literally the four biggest killers. It's like people have healed these things. Well, that's not possible. Look, I don't care what you say. People have done these things. And so I started to realize that plants are medicine, that plants can be medicinal and that they can actually change our body. And once I made that connection to the earth, that opened up my mind more to like this uh, uh, mind heart connection that thoughts become things is only half the story because it's really your thoughts and feelings that create your electromagnetic field that, that turn that use a law of vibration attraction to become things. And so Absolutely. What, for me, it's like, okay, so now you start to understand that you can manipulate your cells. It's like you said, epigenetics is the study of basically being able to turn your cells on or off. And so yeah. for you, how much of this then plays into what you do with your clients? I mean, obviously, um, we're not saying anybody's a profession, not a scientist, but in a yeah. day and age where you have the internet and you can self-educate people, you can self-educate people if you're not doing it. Okay, you can self-educate. So how, how much has this, this new class that you're taking, the master's degrees you're working on, and uh, this kind of epigenetics, how has that changed how you coach people and how you give information out? Honestly, it's helped me be a lot more evidence-based. For, for the longest time, it was more just experience-based, which I think is still good. I, right. you know, I don't want to talk to someone who's never had to lose weight in their life and they're trying to coach me on how to lose weight, right? Or, or that maybe had diabetes right. and, and they're trying, or they've never had diabetes and they're trying to help me with my diabetes. Like there's, right. I, I mean, in, you know, in a, in a, big, in a bigger picture, um, but it's really helped me instead of just saying, I know I feel better and I have energy and, and my mind feels better when I, when I eat plants. I right. couldn't tell you why. And so right. now I have even better information of, oh, well, the gut brain axis, like it's like sisters, they talk all day, like best friends. There's <laughs> always, you know, there's always signals going. And yes. so if there's, sorry, but crap, crap in your, in your gut, like if you're eating a, uh, uh, fried uh, I mean, and i'm not saying fried food doesn't taste good i know it yeah. does but it's, yeah, it, you know, does. it changes your body <laughs> composition it's you know it's not good for you and so if you're if you're eating a, a, a diet that is mucking your gut up how do you think your brain's gonna feel and then the yeah. moment you change it to more uh clean healthy whole foods that's gonna change up here as well and i actually right. even have a, a story with that if if you don't mind Please. me sharing we're all um, about stories here yeah yeah i know you're <laughs> always so great at them <laughs> Um, I know you, you know, I lost my brother uh, 17 or 18 months ago. And mm -hmm. yeah, and it was honestly, that was a very dark time for me. And it took me a really long time to feel normal, whatever that is. But you know, just really like, I mean, I couldn't even post on social media. Like mm -hmm. I, I didn't know what to do. And this is one of the most amazing things. This is like when you know, like everything that's happened to you, you know how it's like, I, someday I'll figure out why this happened to me, whether it's in a week or a couple months or years. I, when my, I'm sorry, it had to be my brother, but this is the moment where I realized 
everything that's happened in my life led me to right here mm -hmm. and everything that I have learned, the journey, like, you know, meditation, traveling to Bali and becoming a yoga teacher, becoming a, a health coach, learning how to be resilient, learning how to push through fear and to come from a place of abundance uh, rather than, than fear and making decisions out of that place. I realized I had the chance to use every single one of those tools at that moment dealing with what happened to my brother. And I went straight in. I yeah. immediately, I mean, I'm not like, I don't like, I'm not a huge drinker, but like I drink. And I, at that point, I cut out the alcohol because I thought I already feel shitty. I don't yeah. want to wake up tomorrow <clears throat> with any, even just the slightest hangover or the slightest, I mean, alcohol alters. Right what goes on in our microbiome, which also Fact. alters our mind, whether you feel foggy, slightly depressed the next day. I, so I cut out alcohol. I went straight up raw vegan. I went raw food. I wanted oh, all yeah. the nutrients from my foods and I was juicing. And I'm not going to say that like I wasn't depressed or that yeah. I wasn't in grief. I just still had a really hard time, but I can't imagine what I would have been like if I started drinking or, mm -hmm. you know, like every night, or if I was eating comfort foods, which again, yeah. they're comfort because they comfort us. You know, yeah, we like sure. warm, fried, uh, greasy, uh, uh, creamy dairy. But like, but for me being able to, uh, when you're eating as close to whole and, um, and even raw, if you can, as possible, your body can extract all the nutrients, all the vitamins and the minerals so that each one of your cells has like the best armor ever. Like I look I at my that. cells, like they're just like punching, like all day fighting for me. And they're these strong, I mean, I, I, I speak another language, so I always see things in, in pictures, but I like, I just, I see my cells like, yeah, like I'm taking care, like I got this, anything that comes yeah. my way. And so I, it's, that's, I was able to see that it worked. Yeah. And that was another really huge shift for me because it validated me. I already right. know it worked, but it, that's what, what, what validated it. And then getting into my master's program and being able to find, I mean, the plethora of scientific information on eating more whole foods as opposed right. to altered foods that are processed. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's energetically, it, it's different. Your, your cells make different energy. The ATP sure. in your cells are creating better energy for you so that you can be more energetic all around. I mean, Mic drop, basically. I mean, what Ali? We could probably end the whole thing right here. But uh, no, you're 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 so right. And, and to add some of that, is first off, I just want to say thank you for you know being vulnerable and just even sharing, you know, uh, that with our audience. Um, and uh, you know, for me, it's the same thing. It's like, um, and I don't know how it is for you. And uh, not to discount any any not to and not to discount my friend Dustin's life and his family either. Uh, but my audience, you guys know, you know, I lost my friend Dustin, which is not any anywhere comparable to like losing your brother. And but. Um, I look at it now, like, you know, almost like, um, like Dustin was like an angel. It was almost like sent for me, you know, because it was like part of this paradigm shift as we're moving into this fifth dimensional reality, mm -hmm. which we're actually going through right now. It's like, was that soul's like, was that soul's thing? Um, did it reincarnate? Did he reincarnate? Did, does that God working in unison? It's like ayahuasca. Mm -hmm. It's like ayahuasca is the root and the leaf. And they grow right above each other, but you can't make it without. So someday somebody had to be like, get the root. And then one day I like, find the leaf and be like, oh, these, these two things together. Like, and so the same thing, I don't, I don't know, but it's, it's, it's letting go of this guilt or this anger or shame or why, and just accepting what is, it's the flow of nature and understanding how can I tap into that? And it makes my heart sparkle to hear you talk about the way that you did, because I know how hard you struggled. And as a friend, uh, and somebody who, who have, kind of was on the other side of that, I wanted to help you so bad, but I had to be so patient and careful with my words. And I just, you, there's just a point in time where you, it's a, a solo journey. And I think that's why so many people, you know, don't, aren't able to heal because they, they don't understand that it's literally the isolation of yourself and understand there's nothing external that can heal you and you've got to go through the pain. And so one is I just got to acknowledge you for that because holy freaking F girl, like I'm so happy for you. I know you're a grown, like I said, grown woman, but I'm proud of you. The Thank second you. thing I want to add to the, the second part of that is that um, 
I, I don't, I, you didn't say this, but I know that this is exactly what you're talking about is uh, living food, like yeah. putting living food in your body because at a cellular level, you know, I think that a lot of people sometimes don't understand that only 5% of our memory is stored in our brain. The other 95% of our memory is actually stored in our DNA, which is in our cells. And so it's like when my spleen is replenishing itself, it's a spleen cell nose become a spleen cell. And my nose cell knows to stay a big beak nose cell and my nails, my nails and so on and so forth. And so it's very interesting because, you know, I, I'm big into the gym and I know a lot of bros, they do the, uh, you know, if it fits your macros, but it's like, you guys, not every calorie is created equal. And not on top of that, the calories that are being created, are they even real or fake? Because a lot of the things that we get inside of a processed food inside of this system that's designed to keep us sick, that's designed to keep us depressed and mentally unstable, they have chemicals that are designed to make you addicted to it, to make yes. you, to, to literally make your cells self-destruct. And so you have to understand that the food that you eat, the boxes of cereal that I love so hard, it's literally a drug because it's designed to be that way. It's designed to. And so for Stephanie, it's like, girl, like you, you have shown, you, you have gone through it. You changed your life from the struggles that you had, you know, growing up to whatever, to the, the yeah, worthiness issues, ago. the worthiness mm -hmm. issues, to losing your brother, to trying to figure out business, which is a whole nother thing in and of itself. And the one thing you did to start was you took control of the, the one thing that you have absolute control over, which is the physical manifestation, which is really a reverse engineering. In entrepreneurship, we talk about reverse engineering all the time. How do you find the people that are doing what you've done in the reverse engineering where it's where you're at and then go back? That's literally what you did. It's like you reverse engineered from where you're at physically and then you went all the way back spiritual, mental, emotional and worked your way uh, up. And so one of the things I want people to understand is that, you know, I understand, I understand and you know, it can be very hard to do this on your own. Like, what are we talking about? Who yeah. do you listen to? Who do you follow? How long do I do it for? What is meditation? Is that part of it? Is it spiritual? What are chakras? Is it chakra? Like all these things. And so uh, all the experience that you've had, all the knowledge, the investment of energy, time, money, you're going to school to get a freaking master's degree so you can help the world even that much more. And so I know that you want to help the world too, because you want to help the world, all the Stephanie's, the Marshall's out there that, you know, are, are struggling who are I really do. trying to find how they can help themselves. I mean, they're, they're, they're showing up, but they're just like, Stephanie, Marshall, I'm not getting any traction. And you put together a three-day virtual event to help people do that. But before we talk about exactly what that is, I got to ask you, girl, because like I said, like you just decided to do it. You never done it before. <laughs> so if you're in the audience right now, if you're listening to this or you're watching this, I don't care what it is. There's something in your life that you want to do right now and you're not taking action on doing it. And I have found that the number one thing that's changed my mm -hmm. life is the power of association, power of proximity, being around the five types of people that you wanna be most like, because you wanna create the energy, you wanna have the energy that they have. So yes. whatever she is about to say, you're gonna to wanna to write this down. So Stephanie, how did you do that? How did you force yourself into taking action and launching a three-day event that you, when you've never done it before, you don't know what you like, how did you do that and how can anybody listening take that kind of action and whatever they want to start. Absolutely. And you know, and I think first of all, like you just said, it starts by surrounding yourself by the five people that you want to be like, and I will say you are one of the top people that have inspired so me to Thank tell you. my story, to be authentic and to do things even when you're scared. And I, and I think that that's my, that's really, that's my first thing aside from, from you yeah. is, yeah is p pushing through fear, pushing through perfection. I am a perfectionist or, or I was a perfectionist. I mean, it still pops in, but when, we, when we're so rigid about something, it, it will wait till the day it's 100% perfect. And I'm not saying don't do things really great and don't do things with passion, yes. but I'm saying don't wait for it to be perfect. Yes. Go for it. If you wanna do something, go for it. Push through that fear. If it scares you, it's actually probably the right thing you should be doing. And I'll I, tell you something. I am scared out of my pants this entire the last two months of me putting all this together it has been so scary there's nights where i sit in bed and i'm like oh, is anyone even going to show up is I anyone know, even right? going to get value from me am i even going to help the people the way that i want them to all these things go on and i just have to i have to be so firm in yeah. who i am first of all i have to yeah. know 
who I am. I have to know my why. Why? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Because if I don't know, it's not strong enough and I'm not going to get out of bed when the world falls apart. So I have to know my why. I have to be so obsessed with what I'm trying to do. And and I am. I am obsessed with helping people. I love that. I want to make this world a better place. And so I have created this retreat where I just, I dove into it. I started, I started watching seminars, some of them free, some of them I bought. I was talking to different people, different entrepreneurs. And like you said, you go find the people that have done it before and you ask them questions, you know, just seeing like what what worked for you, what didn't work for you. Take those notes. And you know, it's, and I know, you know, this too, it's having a heart of service, you know, wanting to serve someone else and then being able to learn from them. Right. Like it's, it's like, it's an exchange and it's an energy exchange and it's beautiful and, and you're giving each other both value, but really just being so clear on why you want to do something, pushing through the fear, believing in yourself and not waiting for everything to be perfect. Let's go. And, and I'm sure the night before I will be, I'll probably even be up all night. Cause I, you know, cause I'm, I, I care so much about what people think. Yeah. I want to help people, you know, but that's not going to stop me from right. moving forward. Yeah. 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 My, my, I heard a quote that was one time it was like, um, because my purpose is bigger than my fear. Right. Absolutely. Um, Well, I I love that. I mean, like literally it hits the nail on the head. You know, the three things I always tell people about overcoming fear is you've got to get clarity on what you, what you want and why. So that's what you're saying. It's like you guys without clarity, without clarity in your life, it's like the, I think, I think probably self-awareness and then clarity. It's like, first you got to become self-aware. Yeah. Then you got to have clarity. So that's the number one way to overcome fear. The second thing I would say is to create confidence, which is what Stephanie basically just said. It's like, how can you have such con? How can you have confidence? Well, you get confidence because you're clear on what it is you're trying to do and why you're trying to do it, which that creates confidence in you. And once you have clarity and confidence, next thing is it creates certainty. And once you start to create that clarity, that confidence, that certainty, that's what allows you to show up like Stephanie. You're like, well, I, my purpose is bigger than my fear. I don't know what the F I'm doing, but I'm going first. So, uh, if that wants to come, let's go. Right. Cause you just truly want to help the world. And I just, I just respect you so much for that. It's one of the reasons I look up to you and you're, I'm so inspired by the way that you live and the things that you do. But the next thing would be then like, okay, like what, what is the, like they're clear on the people that are watching, they know they need clarity. They, they have some questions about how they can literally change their life. They can, how can they live a more holistic approach to their life? How can they feed that mental, emotional, spiritual, uh, you know, need that they're, they're looking for. And that's what this event has been created for. And so we just, or like maybe a little bit, first off, tell me when, the, when is the event anyways? And, and over the three days, like, what is it that you're even covering? Like, what can people expect to leave with? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so it's it's in less than two weeks. It's at the end of January. It's January 29th. It starts at night. It's just a like a night thing. And then it's Saturday, Sunday, the, the 30th and 31st, all day. Oh, and I awesome. created it. Yeah, thank you. I, yeah. I'm, so, I'm excited about it. I'm you should so excited. Be. Despite, despite the sometimes where the word, you know, the voice comes in and is like, who do you think you are? I, I you know, push that aside. I'm excited because I know it works because it's worked for me. I've seen it work on my clients. I've right. seen it's worked for other people. You know, there's a lot of people that are wondering, how do I get healthy? I want to get healthy. I want to be more conscious. Or maybe they've tried and they feel like they failed or it's just really hard. And so I created this event so that you could learn all these different modalities and you can pick and choose what you want. Maybe maybe you do a meditation and you don't like it. Maybe you go to the sound healing and you think that was weird, that was boring, you know, okay, fine. So it was a cool experience because you're not gonna know that you didn't that you didn't like it until you did it, right? So now you right. can check that off the list or hey, this meditation actually really worked for me. Yeah. Right, right. So, so I mean, it's I've, I've literally created a, an event that you, can start becoming more conscious with right. it's 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 yoga meditation it's uh there'll, there'll be a sound bath healing which i know not everyone's been able to be exposed to oh, oh so they're cool. so good oh yeah. my god it's so good yeah <laughs> it is i mean you again you feel that energy vibrating in your body and your right. cells uh, a cacao ceremony will be will be part of it. Again, it's just it's being able to bring ceremony within yourself and right. with others in a right. in a community setting and something something different. Ceremony of 
of cacao, which is an uplifting superfood with right. some amazing, amazing ingredients and nutrients. And it, it lifts your mood up. I mean, people, people do cacao ceremonies all over the world. It's very sacred. And I think, you know, and again, not getting like super off the deep end, like woo woo hippie or anything. I think it's important as, as humans in general to understand What's a ceremony? So yeah. how is, do I do I have a ceremony every day when I eat my breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Do I do I thank the universe? Do I thank God? Do I thank who you know whoever creator? Think, I'm just thankful for this food, and yeah. that thankfulness is going to go inside of you. It's gonna it's gonna create a different vibe, and so just 100%. being able to create that ceremony. So you know that there's going to be an opportunity there for that. We're we're going to be talking about 2021 and and getting clear not only on our whys but our goals and intentions, you know, a one, three, six months and a year plan of how we are hoping 21 is going to go out to. We're even going to write a letter to our future selves, which I love that exercise and I'm so excited to do it. Uh, that we're, we're even going to do facials, like at home facials, you know, yeah. if we're stuck at home. Uh, maybe let again, let's do something that feels nice. And you know, 100%. sure, I, I wash my face and I do, I'll do a mask or something, but there's something different when it's like, okay, step one, get some, get a steam bath going, you know, get some, get some water heated. So, okay, luxuriously take your time to wash your face. Okay, then cleanse it and, and put your mask on and then let's steam go. it. And, yeah, just like really just being in the moment, being present. And yeah. you know, when other people are involved, you're, in, you're accountable. So you're not going to just like really quickly go through it. So it's yeah. an experience. Absolutely. Uh, we're well, we're going to be talking I, about, oh yeah. No, please go ahead. Please keep going. We're going to talk about um, food freedom, you know, ditching the diet. You know, we're, 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 we're a culture that is like all into diet culture and I get it. We want to look good. We want to feel good. We right. want to lose weight. That all, that's, that's the, the, the side effects of changing your diet. The side effects usually are you're going to get leaner or lose some weight or build muscle or whatever it is that, that again, that you're focused on. Right. Uh, so we'll be talking about that. We're even going to be talking about sustainability, uh, you know, zero waste products, how to be more sustainable at home and how to recycle things, how to reuse things. Um, again, just, you know, things that, that happen yeah. in our daily lives, but we don't really always get conscious about it. Um, I have someone speaking about the energy of food and how you can eat for your chakras. And again, some, you know, some people are into chakras, some people don't know it and some people aren't. But it's just knowledge. I'm not saying right. you have to eat for your chakras every day. Right. You have to meditate every day. It's saying, hey, I yeah. have this spread of things. You pick. Oh, you don't like tomatoes? Cool. Then go for the cucumbers. You know, right. just, you, right. know you pick what you want. Right. We're also going to do two raw cooking classes. I'll be teaching cooking classes. Let's go. Come on. This is awesome. Yeah. And, I, and, oh, and we're going to have fire dancing because why not? <laughs> really? That's yeah. so cool. Well, there, there's a, I mean, first off is that like, um, as far as the chakras and the eating, I just, I just think it's interesting that, you know, you're, you're giving people an opportunity to take control of their frequency. It's become such a, you know, just such a thing that uh, such a cliche thing. People say, Oh, raise your vibe. Or like, I'm just, you know, what's the vibe? Or like, but no, really like we are energetic beings. Our cells are vibrating at a frequency. So really first off, what it sounds like you're creating for everybody is an understanding of how to use, let's just call it ancient technology, basically, to literally have more peace in your heart and harmony in your experience. And so it's like, I, I think it's interesting. It's like, yeah, I'm not telling you that I eat this or that. Or it's like, but for me, I, I do, this is my life. I, you know, this is the same. Like I have, I still, I always have a freaking gym and my, I have all my, my stones lined up in my window and I bathe them in the, in the moon and right. Like I, I'm into all the things. And so for anybody that's listening to this or watching this, if you don't know Stephanie yet and you're not sold on what she's created and it's not even about selling people, it's just that there's so much knowledge out there. It's like, how do you cipher through it? How do you know what's going to work? And what Stephanie has created is basically, let's just call it a taste test. It's like, I'm going to, she's going to open up the treasure trove of all these ancient technologies that you can literally use to, let's just call it manipulate the cells in your body for good. Like it's just teaching you how to get your, your cells to vibrate in harmony because that's where disease comes from is our cells get too, they get, let's call it frantic. They get, they get crazy and then they short circuit and then they create this disease in our body. 
And so what Stephanie is offering you guys is an opportunity to create harmony and peace in your life, how to live from love. One of our viewers said, how to open your heart up. And I don't know about you, but like, that's the kind of shit I'm into. And so it's like, it sounds like just like a fun weekend with a bunch of cool people who are learning about a bunch of cool stuff that they actually love. And more than anything, Stephanie, I know that you will agree with me as well. When I make an investment into myself, I, it's always the best investment. When I make an investment into my future, it, it never proves wrong. Even for the things that didn't turn out good, the investment has never been bad because it's always been able to help me evolve. And so for the viewers that are listening, how can they go find more information? But more importantly, where can they go sign up? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for asking. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, on my website, thesuperfoodgoddess.com, that's where people can sign up. You can find me on Instagram as the superfood goddess. I would be happy to answer questions in DMs or, you know, however, you can even email me if you want. It's the superfood goddess at gmail.com. But, but that's um, where people I sign up it. is on my website. Cool. Uh, and, and I'm more than happy to, to talk to yeah. anyone. If anyone has apprehensions, concerns, yeah. questions, they just want to vibe anything. Yeah. I'm always happy to answer and help. And, and that's so true because you helped me so much through my, through me trying to learn. I was hitting up all the time. I knew I was pestering. I was like, I'm not trying to pester you, but you were, you were so patient and so amazing. And I think that for a lot of our viewers, for anybody who's been wanting to learn more of how to live a more holistic life, a more spiritual life, how to be more intentional. The thing it is, is that like a lot of the spiritual leaders out there and holistic leaders, you can feel this like almost uh, scarcity or this almost desperation in what they're doing because it's like, yeah, they believe what they're doing, but they also live within the matrix. And so there's just sometimes it doesn't feel very aligned or cohesive, even though like, cause you can feel they don't believe it for the viewers and listeners right now, you guys know, you can tell that Stephanie is all the way in on her cause, her mission, why she's doing this, her purpose. And she's not coming here telling you, you got to do this. You got to do that. If you want, if you're ready, if you've been feeling called to have a better understanding of how to live holistic, how to take advantage of the literal energy that we have in our body and how to unlock what's called the secrets of life. You guys make sure you're following at the Superfood Goddess. The link is in her bio. She's got other goodies that are in there. It doesn't matter if you're a complete noob or if you've been doing this for a long time. She's got everything for you in between and it's absolutely gonna transform your life. Even if you've been doing this, you're still gonna wanna train, uh, show up because you're gonna love the transformation you go through in literally one weekend. Stephanie, is there anything else that you wanna add? I mean, this has been so amazing to connect with you. You're always such a freaking pleasure to have on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. And you as well. And you know, I think I just want to reiterate one more time because you said it uh, like halfway through our, our t discussion. It really is about mind, body and soul. Oh, it's yeah, not just right. about ch changing your diet. It's about changing your mind. It's about ch it's becoming more spiritual. And I and again, not because like, you gotta, you gotta be hippie woo. -woo. It's just right. more a, a, a <laughs> conscious spiritual aspect, a ceremonial so celebrate your life, celebrate what you're doing. It's all full circle. Amen. You know, if you're eating well, and you have terrible relationships, if you're eating well, and you hate your job, you're still not going to be healthy, you have yeah. to have that full circle. And again, that's that, you know, that goes with my one on one coaching, my group coaching, right. my 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 event and just in life in general well no it's so important too it's like uh you know that was my case in 2019 it's like my physical health was like peak you know um my mental my mentality was like what's up my financial health was like what was up but um i was miserable in my heart and i i hated my i i didn't hate myself i guess really but i just didn't trust myself and i didn't believe in myself and i felt fake because I was going out and giving this persona of being strong, but I didn't feel strong. And then I, what I did is I manifested that within a partner and that of somebody that equally had those feelings within herself. And so we couldn't even heal together. It's like we had to be separate to be able to start to start to heal these things. And so you're right. It's like on paper, I had, I was healthy everywhere. But I was lying to myself about my heart. I woke up every day feeling like I was behind. I woke up every day looking over my to-do list, which I call my success list now, but my success list and being like, I don't want to do this. And I was just lying, lying, lying. And before I knew it, I had created, I don't know what inside of me, let's just say it was an ulcer um, that was there for two years that like physically, you know, and then that would, would worry me and oh, I'm going to die. And it was like, and what I know now is that I was just out of balance. I mean, I had different energy centers, which are not, you know, physical things, right? They're vortexes of where our energy swirls in and out of. And I said, these energy centers that were not balanced. And even though that I had made a lot of money and built this big, massive brand, like I hated my life even more than the year I tried to kill myself. And so 
I could not be a bigger advocate for what you have put together. I mean, even if it's just starting plant-based and just going into like, oh, maybe you've had quick questions on it. You guys go try it. I'm not telling you you should eat meat and liver every day. I'm not telling you, you should eat plants every day or anywhere in between. Although I am going to get a shirt made that says plants are friends, not food. But, guess <laughs> <I love it. laughs> but, um, but, um, you know, just this whole thing. I just, I just, again, to the audience, I'm telling you, anybody listen to this. And even if, even if the date has passed, if you're coming back and watching this video or you're coming back and listening to this after, after the hurry event has happened, you guys still go connect with Steph. I guarantee she's going to be doing more events, having more masterminds, more coaching. And this is just an opportunity to, to get, to change your life. Again, I'm not, I'm not trying to pull smoke up your ass. And obviously I'm a big fan of yours. I just, you guys, this is so important to mental health. It saved my life going plant-based and becoming uh, in, in, in more intentional and conscious, just conscious living. It, it's, it saved my life. I mean, I would have died of, I don't know. I mean, and how many people are living dead already? It's like, Man, I have so many more people my parents' age and in between, I'm 36. It's just like, and in a whole generation of people that are being raised and they can feel it. We all feel that something's supposed to be different. It's not something that's not right, but we don't know how to unplug it. And you brought the answer. And I just know like from a, and that's some cliche, but like from a humane humanity standpoint, it's like, wow, thank you so much for what you're doing because it means so much to so many people. Thank you so much, Marshall. And thank you so much for opening conversation yeah. with me and, yeah. and always wanting to, to expand other people's mind. I, I really, yeah. I, that like, that's what connected us. And for sure. And I appreciate you. You are a light human, a light being, and you're changing thank people's you. lives and the world. So thank you so we, much. We, 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 we see the reflection in others that we feel in ourselves, right? Uh -huh. So it's cool. That's how you know when you're on point, when all your friends are badasses too. Uh, I love it. Well, thank you so much, Steph. I appreciate you. Uh, uh, we'll talk to you soon. I'll probably send you a couple of voice notes right before your event, just to kind of give you a little pep talk. I know you got it anyway. Yes, but, please uh, do. It's always good to share energy and get it stirring, but you're going to crush it. You guys at the Superfood Goddess, give her some likes, give her some loves. If you guys know somebody that can get value out of this interview, do us a favor. Make sure you share it. Get Stephanie out to the world. She's doing her best to change it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a Bye -bye. good day. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. This has been another episode of the Marshall Gillen Show. If you guys aren't subscribed to the podcast, make sure you do so. If you guys haven't gone over to marshallgillen.com, make sure you go over.